So in the morning, we have a choice how we're going to order our day. Way up there at the top is how we're going to respond to the person in life that's closest to us. You see, it's how we're going to order our priorities. It's our highest priority from which flows all other activities in life, which should make us ask ourselves how we're doing as men, as husbands. Where, where does loving our wife as Christ loves us, his church, fit in the hierarchy of our priorities? Is it just there? Or do we see it that all other priorities we have made, and God made one for us? See, that's, that's what's astounding about this. That's why it's highest, because there aren't any other priorities, you know, uh, that, that, that we have operating on that was so clearly made by the Lord. If we listen to God's word, he's told us that our marriage is to become our highest earthly priority. So we should accept God's priority for our lives. Since God is so highly thinking of our marriage, and since all other joys flow from that relationship, our marriages color our lives. You know, I I just said two weeks ago that that, uh, even whether, whether we're in an unhappy marriage and it ends, that marriage will affect the rest of our life. I said that. I had a few people ask me, Really? And so you know what? This week, the, new, the London paper, I forget what it's called, it's not the BBC, but it's the London Times or something, did a, in a huge study that they've been working on for years in Britain, and they found out that people's health is totally tied to their marriage. And if they're happily married, they're healthier. And if they're unhappily married or divorced, all of them are unhealthier. And I thought, there is a secular source affirming what God says. That our marriage is so central to our health, our well-being, and all of the joys of life, and even our fruitfulness in serving God. If we are married, that is central. If we're not, we'll see in a minute, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says you get a lot more done for the Lord if you're not married. But he said, if you're married, stay married. You know, don't think I'm going to get unmarried, do more for the Lord. No, he says, if you're married, then you have to focus on that as your priority. So, as priorities are putting choices we have into an order of importance, as we serve God through life, if we are married, God says you must accept the priority of a Christ-like marriage and making that very important. The second biggest choice in life, and the one that impacts everything else after salvation, is your marriage. So what we need to consider is how do we obey the Lord and serve Him in our marriage by making our marriage our primary ministry priority. You know, a lot of people have ministries. And if you ask them, they say, well, I do this, I do this, I do this. Do you hear very many of them say, well, my priority of ministry is my marriage? That's what the Lord says, because that is what affects everything else. I always remember when I was going to Dallas Seminary, uh, Chuck Swindoll told us a story It was very sad as only he could tell. He, unbelievable the way he could communicate. But he was talking to us students. And he says, you know what, last year, our finest Dallas Seminary student, who had mastered every nuance of the Greek language and every difficult area of the Hebrew language, who had mastered speed reading and who had amassed a massive library, who graduated at the very top of his class, one of the most promising young men, came to the graduation commencement and convocation and marched across the stage and got his summa magna everything and was shaken hands by every notable person and he said and got a pat on his back and as he walked down the stage and got in his car and went home to show all of his honors to his wife, he walked in the room and there on their bed was a pyramid of all of his books and there was a note saying, You were married to those books for the last five years. I hope you enjoy the rest of your life being married to them. I am gone. And his wife left him, divorced him, would never turn back, never listen to him, and he wasn't able to go into the ministry. Swindoll says, Your marriage is more important than seminary and your books and every other ministry because that one determines even the role of an elder, how your marriage is doing. Very sobering to think about. Well, we have many responsibilities in life, including our job and our parenting and our educating our children and serving Christ's church through missions or Sunday school or youth group or evangelism, and all of those are important to God, but only our marriage is given the place of greatest priority. If you're married, God puts that one above, and he said, if you don't do that one, you can't do the others. 
effectively or well, or for a reward. If we want to most fully serve the Lord, turn back with me to 1 Corinthians 7. Here's what the Lord says, 1 Corinthians 7. I mean, if you just want to uh, be able to, to completely, with no distraction, serve the Lord, he says, then never get married because you'll get distracted with a higher priority. 1 Corinthians 7, look at verse 32. Because if we want to most fully serve the Lord, then we shouldn't get married. That's what Paul said. In other words, certain people like Jeremiah or the 144,000, and in certain times, like in the persecuted times of the early church, are times that marriage may not be best. Remember Paul said for this present time, I mean, Nero was revving up the, the persecution engine in the Roman Empire. And by the way, persecution in church history with Nero was local and sporadic. By the time we get to Trajan, it was provincial. And by the time we get to Domitian and onward, it was empire-wide. And Paul said, for what's coming, for some of you, it would be better not to get married. He says that. Now that was for a very local period of time because of the persecutions coming. And he said, for all time, if you want to absolutely, completely serve the Lord, but he says, you better make sure you have that calling. Because he goes on to say, it's better to marry than to burn with endless, oh, I wish I was. It totally distracts you from what you said you were going to be focused on. But look at verse 32. But I want you to be without care. 1 Corinthians 7, 32. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord. He doesn't have any distractions. He doesn't have to pick up his clothes and throw them on the floor. He doesn't have to come home at any time. He doesn't have to remember to tell someone where he's going, especially his wife. He doesn't have to remember to call in if he's going to be late. He doesn't have any cares in the world. I mean, he's rumpled and wrinkled and late and, you know, and everything's a mess around him. It's okay. It doesn't bother anybody. You don't have any cares if you're unmarried. You just can care for the things of the Lord, how you may please the Lord. And by the way, it wouldn't please the Lord for you to be rumpled and wrinkled and messy, but I was just teasing, okay? Verse 33, but he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Do you see the distraction she is? He can't just endlessly go in one direction. He's got, it's kind of like... um, when in our in our early days, uh, when we used to go to conferences, we had this 40-foot motorhome that that a person in the church always let us use, and we had this trailer behind it. And I remember I was just plowing along, you know, with it set on cruise at 75 uh, along the turnpike in Oklahoma, and I glanced in my mirror and I thought, wow, it's 4th of July. I saw this arc of sparks just unbelievably just in the dark. It was just like a Mauna Loa erupting, and I thought... Well, it's awful close to the motorhome. And, and I looked more closely, you know, and, and the tire had come off of the big car hauler, and it was the whole car hauler, this big trailer that the car was sitting on in the old days. It wasn't, we weren't towing it. We were dragging a trailer with a car on it. The tire, I don't know where the tire went. It was gone. And the whole frame was dragging at 75 miles per hour down the highway for who knows how long and had slowly turned the, the metal red hot and it was starting to melt the tires. I mean, you know what would happen next? It burst into flame and boy, we would have a bigger fireworks show. And so you know what? I couldn't just cruise through life without remembering something was attached to me, cruising through life, the trailer. A lot of men just cruise through life and they forget that there's an attachment behind them. Their wife, you know, that is a partner in all this thing and, and affects everything that goes on. By the way, we pulled over and, and, and uh, that all got solved. But I will never forget that uh, fire show on the highway and how quickly your life can change. Basically, Paul says this, if you want to be without care, verse 32, don't get married. But for most of history and for most of us, God's servants, our marriage is to be our primarily, primary ministry. Okay? 